Yeah, we're going live. All right. So, hi there. Hi, Stavro. Wait a minute, Ligoyani, one moment. I'll tell you when we can start. Okay, we're good to go. Welcome, Yanis Kutsomitis. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's the third, uh, the third, I think, uh, event we're running uh, as part of our series uh, called Guest at Home. Seeing as we're all at home and we're all working from home, and uh, it's a chance for us to, it's a chance for us to uh, keep in touch with our community. And uh, we're yeah. inviting, we're inviting some friends uh, to come and talk, and uh, specifically experts and. Uh, Yanis, you've had a long career in journalism. You run Kappa News now. Yeah, you 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 speak on a lot of, uh, and you you're a commentator on many of the news channels. So welcome. And uh, today's topic is the current situation with the coronavirus and how uh, how this affects uh, yes. business, society, Europe, uh, the world in general. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Stavro and uh, Maria. And uh, it's a pleasure to to speak with you because it's, uh, it's one of the most dramatic moments of our lives, if we consider what's the situation about. And we're all being tested as uh, far as uh, our uh, patients, our ability to cope with new situation in our lives, uh, our families, uh, people who are away and we can't see them, touch them, feel them. It's, it's a very difficult situation. So, but let's leave the dramatic side uh, things aside and just go to the subject, which is how to deal with this situation in regards the economic impact, which uh, it is tremendous for many countries, many economies, many societies. Uh, entrepreneurs are losing their dreams. Uh, companies are losing their cash flows. Uh, the the states and the governments are strained to the to the bone uh, to, to try to protect the vulnerable and uh, the people who lose their jobs, companies who lose their uh, income, and uh, we've seen a lot of efforts from uh, uh, governments, uh, the G20, the G7, Eurozone, uh, the U.S. government just passed or is about to the Senate is about to vote on. Uh, tremendous uh, fiscal bill uh, that will uh, bring the total of the um, support that the American uh, government and the Fed is providing to the to the economy up to six trillion dollars, which is uh, an astronomic figure. But uh, despite all these big, big numbers, uh, we should see how we there is no concrete plan right now on how the economy will survive this um, intensive care system or this, or this economic intensive care, if it will be able to keep the economy rolling and uh, jobs being protected and uh, companies uh, being uh, alive. So I think the, I, I just saw the, the rough, uh, the draft of the measures in the, the Senate and I think it's it's a good uh, package overall uh, because it will provide a cushion uh, of about three to four months of uh, economic intensive care for the American economy, for businesses to at least stay alive somehow. Uh, what we don't know is uh, how much the electronic, the e-commerce e and the digital economy will be able to maintain uh, the the chains of uh, production and if the companies all around the country will be able to to maintain the businesses. On the other hand, we see some uh, signs of uh, um, real efforts in the European uh, governments in the eurozone trying to have uh, some uh, fiscal uh, buffer uh, be able to provide to the countries which are affected the most. The problem is in Europe, uh, the, the governmental system is so fragmented between the member states that uh, not all countries are affected in the same way. Let's, uh, well, Italy is totally broken down. 
Uh, Spain is a, in a very, very tough situation. Uh, France is also in a very difficult position. Whereas, this, is really uh, going to test. this is really going to test Europe, isn't it? Of course, yes, exactly. And uh, what, what the governments or the, the European Union leaders will discuss tomorrow, there is a European summit will take place via video conference tomorrow afternoon would be how to, um, how to cooperate in order to uh, alleviate the, the, the fragmentation uh, between the different uh, countries. Uh, because we've seen like, uh, for instance, in, in Sweden, uh, the economy is still alive. Uh, companies are uh, working, still working, and uh, people go to work. Uh, and other, other countries of uh, Northern Europe as well. Whereas in the, in the South, uh, uh, people, uh, businesses uh, literally wind down. So uh, we had three, three basic uh, uh, efforts uh, right now from uh, the European Union leaders. One is try to keep the financial system alive. That means the banks uh, should remain open. The, the transactions should uh, continue to happen and uh, no bank run should uh, happen in the countries. And the people should feel safe that their deposits are uh, guaranteed and the people's money are there and the business will continue. I think on that side, the European Central Bank has played a crucial role in providing uh, almost uh, unlimited uh, uh, liquidity to European banks around the Euro area. So right now, uh, despite all this dramatic situation, we haven't seen uh, this uh, spill over to the financial system. So we have a situation right now where the banks are almost safe uh, from, uh, let's say, uh, meltdown or uh, a real financial crisis. The other uh, pillar of the, of the system is the sovereign bonds uh, uh, market, which is the, the market from which the governments are raising uh, money, raising finance in order to uh, keep their budgets uh, running. And uh, this uh, has created a lot of frustration among European countries because the bond, uh, the yields, the yields have gone up and the spreads have gone up between uh, the core uh, uh, countries of the north, uh, let's say the AAA rated uh, countries of uh, very strong uh, finances and the, the south, uh, the spreads are have wide. So right now there is talk that was a talk uh, last night at the Eurogroup, the Council of uh, Finance Ministers of the, of the Eurozone, in order to have a, a mechanism where uh, it, uh, when a country feels that it's uh, sovereign market of a bond market is in danger, it could apply to the European uh, Stability Mechanism, the ESM, which is the same bailout mechanism that provided those tens of billions of uh, euros to Greece in uh, previous years. So uh, when a country applies uh, for uh, that mechanism, uh, automatically the European Central Bank is then authorized officially to acquire as many uh, sovereign uh, government bonds from the secondary market of that country that is in danger of its yields uh, going uh, skyrocketing, etc. So it's uh, like a guarantee mechanism that uh, uh, not, uh, it won't happen again, the same crisis that happened in 2010 to 2012, uh, where uh, Greece, uh, Ireland, Spain, and ultimately Italy uh, faced uh, a real danger of uh, bankruptcy because they couldn't raise uh, money from uh, the bond markets. So I think this second pillar of uh, economic stability will be uh, stabilized with these measures that will be finalized tomorrow at the European summit, the video conference. It will be uh, you think finally... Might, might, this might be an opportunity, whereas, I mean, it seems that Europe might be very, very tested and could but potentially, uh, could potentially, I suppose, in a, a long shot, but potentially could uh, cause such a big rift between the nations, but it could potentially also be a unifying factor. Mm, yes, but we have to see how, how, we, come, how we come to that uh, point. So to conclude the, sec the second pillar, that means the, the governments would, would not go bankrupt like Greece went 
in uh, 2010. This will be safeguarded, uh, we hope so, and it looks like it's going to happen tomorrow. The third part, which is the most crucial, well, all, as well as crucial part almost, is the real economy. And this is the, the part that is more difficult in Europe because Europe has very strange, uh, very difficult, uh, uh, the Eurozone has, has very tough uh, measures regarding printing money, to say the least. Uh, in, uh, in contrast to the United States where the Fed and uh, the administration decided to print as much money as needed to keep the man, the, the economy running, in Europe, this is not uh, really possible because of the treaties, because of some economic dogmas of some countries which feel that uh, we should not uh, overreact uh, to this crisis. Uh, so there is a real danger that some countries that have very sound finances and uh, cash buffers like Germany, which uh, uh, some hours ago, the, the Bundestag, the German parliament uh, passed a bill of uh, more than 150 billion euros of support for the German companies in the German economy. Whereas other countries like uh, Italy, for instance, or maybe Spain or maybe Portugal, are not in the same uh, position to spend, uh, to open the coffers and uh, provide uh, with the real economy the money that is needed to, to keep it uh, running and keep it alive. So uh, this is the, the ongoing situation right now, which will be discussed tomorrow and the weeks and the days after, how to keep uh, the, the real uh, economy alive in, in the most vulnerable European states. Uh, in the first days of this uh, calamity, uh, there was uh, total fragmentation. Uh, there was, uh, I, I, I think you, you might have noticed there was a story about a shipment of, uh, of uh, masks that were not allowed to travel uh, from Germany to Italy, etc., which was disastrous. Uh, but now I think we have seen signs of uh, uh, some uh, solidarity, uh, gradual solidarity being developed between the European countries. The European Commission in Brussels is working in uh, 24 hours a day in order to have uh, very speedy uh, public tenders for uh, for uh, ventilators and masks Medical and mental. all this medical yeah. equipment yeah. that will be provided even bypassing all the rules of the European Union in order to have all this stuff being uh, manufactured on time etc or tender so, process i mean there's some very difficult tender processes especially at yeah. the european level right yes i think they're by bypassing it now because of this uh, alarming uh, situation uh, so uh, this is the situation right now, and uh, but the problem is people are some people are uh, very afraid of the future, and uh, they don't know what's going to happen with the companies. Uh, I've seen some good signs of the Greek reaction, Greek government reaction regarding uh, there's even talk of uh, doing some uh, restructuring of the Greek uh, uh, post scheduled uh, checks uh, system, which is a, a vital part of the Greek uh, company's uh, cash flow and the financial uh, 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 point of uh, incentive. revenue. Yes, yeah. incentive. Uh, so th there are good signs that uh, the Greek government is responding in a way that uh, uh, it's not reassuring, but uh, keeps some uh, uh, feeling that, uh, okay, th they're doing their job as much as they can. Of course, we're in a very tough situation on the medical side because Greece is very under-equipped uh, regards uh, ICU beds and uh, units. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're in the process now of uh, uh, building and uh, constructing new, uh, new seats and new beds in the IC units, ICU units around the hospitals of Greece. We're not at the situation right now where uh, we can't afford to have uh, people uh, in the in the hospitals. We're not uh, overcrowded yet, uh, but the there was an alarming uh, incident yesterday because the the new cases rose from uh, 21 to 78, uh, which is very worrying. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the to 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 make a long story short, the big big question right now 
besides the lockdown and how we cope with ourselves and our daily lives, it's how to keep the, the structure, the economic structure uh, intact in order for when this lockdown uh, finishes, uh, we'll be able to start again uh, with uh, doing our business, uh, picking up where we left, uh, where we were in, etc. Of course, dozens, millions of our projects, our, our plans, our dreams uh, have gone to the dustbin right now, but uh, it's, it could be also uh, an opportunity to reschedule uh, our lives, reschedule the countries, reschedule the way we see business being conducted. So uh, it's overall a very, very, uh, let's say, tempting but challenging, challenging times. Uh, we are tested as humans, as uh, people with uh, solidarity, as uh, civilians, as people of a, of, uh, of a country. And uh, it's also Greece's uh, national holiday today. And <laughs> it's true. a sentimental issue because our ancestors uh, almost two, two centuries ago decided to take up arms and fight for their freedoms. So today uh, we can't fight for our freedom by we just fight for it by staying inside. <laughs> so we're fighting for our survival, I suppose, yes. the survival of the economy, yes. but also the survival of our, of our older generations, which are more at risk. Exactly. Exactly. So and, and the, the second topic I wanted to raise, and we'll, we can go on in uh, discussing that, is uh, the, the big thing that uh, bothers me in the last 48 hours is what would uh, potentially be the exit strategy for our countries to go back to business, which is a very tricky situation because as, as far as I've uh, read uh, papers from experts and uh, doctors and uh, scientists, it's very difficult to see how there will be a safe return to everyday life without uh, a proper uh, uh, medication uh, to treat the patients first. And second, uh, if, uh, there is, uh, if there is no uh, vaccination yet in order to, to be able to to know that the most vulnerable will be protected. So uh, how we exit this mess, it's not uh, very clear yet. No one has a clear picture how it will be done. One, one, the most, let's say, realistic approach I read in the last few hours is that there will be on and offs in our lockdowns. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, have, we'll go out of a lockdown in, let's say, one month or six weeks from now will spend some weeks trying to revitalize our lives and economy. And then if, if the numbers go up again, then we'll go back into lockdown. It will be like that for months, many months to come. So whoever, whoever, the number, the statistics, I suppose. Yeah, whoever thinks that uh, this is something that will just uh, uh, phase out in the next uh, two or three weeks, I think it's... Uh, it's fooling himself and Mr. Mr. The President, Mr. Trump, who said whose people will spend their Easter uh, with family, etc. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're so right. Until, is, there's, until there's yeah. a, a viable, uh, a viable uh, medication for this, or, or a, a, there's no way, there's no way that uh, life will continue because it's just going to flare up again, isn't it? Yes. Uh, okay. Now we are more trained. As uh, every day, as every day passes, we we get more trained on how to approach uh, social life. Uh, I've been twice to the supermarket. I had my gloves, and I tried to keep a social distance of two meters from everyone. I kept almost exact amount of money to pay. I didn't want any change. Uh, yeah. I, I left the change to the, to the people there. So uh, I left many of my plastic bags outside for one day. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe some uh, not so safe, uh, but it's the least I could do in order to minimize uh, the risk. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll be more trained in, our, in our, uh, the way we approach uh, things once we go out of this lockdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but sure. the risk the risk will be there it, it, it won't go away in four or five or six weeks from now yeah to be frank i mean i can't see i can't see any any quick uh, any quick way out of this uh, specifically for our business um you know we've seen a, a complete shutdown uh, complete shutdown and uh, revenues are uh, well i mean not completely dead but uh, we have got some uh, some contracts which keep us keep us uh, floating um but we're seeing i mean it's certainly the, the economy cannot survive like this with uh, with just e-commerce at this stage I don't think that the logistic systems are there in in in, in order to to facilitate you know uh, the uh, the economy to run in this way. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting times, and you're right. This is a good opportunity for us to rethink and uh, and reset perhaps. Um, so I mean, we're looking, we're talking literally all the time about you know new opportunities, new ways to to rejig uh, rejig our business, and these uh, these talks. Mm are part of that, right? Keeping in touch with everyone yes. and uh, getting our friends to talk to each other. Um, yes, I, th I think the once we come up with a comprehensive plan of, uh, of an exit strategy, or whatever that be, we will be able to plan our uh, businesses and our uh, sectors in a way that will be accommodated to the new situation because uh, every business has some uh, flexibility and uh, there should be also some uh, flexibility uh, from the governments to, in order to accommodate uh, new business. For instance, which sectors would be more supported in the initial phase of uh, relaxation of the, of the lockdowns? Will it be, let's say, the, the industry? Will it be manufacturing? Uh, what about the service sector? How can we work under the new uh, situation? Uh, so all this uh, exit strategy needs to be worked out in a, in a smart way uh, and also a flexible way in order to keep things running and we haven't seen that happening again i've been having talks with some people in the government and they start realizing that they need to come up on a way how to to go out uh, of this situation until now they are trying to mitigate the the damage they're trying to yeah, I think they're firefighting uh, raise right now, raise awareness to the people to stay yeah, inside yeah. okay this will go on for a few days now now i think most of the population has realized that they should stay in etc cetera, etc cetera. in the, yeah. the next few days or couple of weeks i think we'll we we'll have to start thinking on how when and under which terms and uh, circumstances we will be able to uh, come out of this uh, tunnel. Mm -hmm. And Yanni, what are you hearing on the educational uh, sector? I mean, we hear that some schools have taken their uh, lessons uh, virtual also uh, via Zoom, Zoom schools. And uh, there are other schools that are doing, are having, haven't even tried any kind of initiative. Um, I mean, what is the plan there? Because, I mean, ca kids can't and students can't stay out of school uh, for too long either that's also not good for them and uh, they do need to be kept on track and it does help them to be guided especially when they're at a younger age um i mean just asked uh, our oldest ones uh, doing a lesson since monday every day between eight and two uh, and the youngest one isn't and that's a bit worrying mm. because you know we can't afford and he can't afford and no parent or student can afford just to miss a whole a whole year like mm. that yeah well uh, the first of all the, there was no there was no good acceptance uh, by the the teachers and uh, mm -hmm. for this uh, distant learning issue uh, they have been uh, uh, we know that uh, the greek teachers are not uh, the most uh, technically advanced uh, in the world regarding new ways of uh, uh, using uh, digital technology on the other hand i think because Greeks are uh, innovative people, I think uh, if there is a good will, uh, we could find ways of uh, using all these wonderful uh, new technologies in order to keep the children uh, uh, and the, the pupils' uh, attention and maybe also combine with games and also combine with uh, interactive uh, uh, stuff that will make them more uh, 
uh, keep uh, their interest in in this issue. Uh, it's it's a totally different uh, ball game now. I think also the 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 government needs to come up with new ideas on on how to uh, manage the situation. As we said before, uh, how can we uh, imagine uh, students or five year olds, six year olds? Uh, going to uh, first grade and not hugging each other and not kissing yeah. each other and not playing with another it's it's uh, i can't think of this situation because it's still the danger is still out there and we've seen cases uh, there was a case in italy yesterday of a 17 year old uh, teenager who died without any other uh, uh, pre-existing uh, uh, disease and uh, we've seen people in uh, intensive care units who are in the twenties. So it's a real danger. I don't know how mm. we're going to cope with that. But uh, this this is really a big, big, big problem. And uh, it's so dramatic that I was thinking yesterday of the children of Syria, which for years are undereducated, have lost their schools, etc. And but uh, um, I, I think that uh, if there is a goodwill and uh, much innovation, I think we can find ways to keep uh, our uh, sons and daughters in close contact with uh, the schools uh, and uh, the knowledge uh, sector. Yanni, I wonder if I can take the opportunity just to ask your opinion and uh, your thinking around uh, what's happening uh, up in Fraki and uh, with the situation with Turkey, before we open to questions uh, and, yes, and yes, commentary yes. from our friends. Uh, I well, see Charles, uh, George is here, Maro is here, welcome mm -hmm. Maro. Uh, mm -hmm. Olga was here mm -hmm. yesterday as well, welcome mm -hmm. Olga. Mm -hmm. Teodora is here. So um, if you guys want to get your questions ready, maybe raise your hand, mm -hmm. uh, open up your video and we'll unmute you in a few minutes. So yes, it's uh, it, it was, uh, <laughs> that was the double, double whammy for Greece for uh, in a few weeks ago, because uh, it was um, okay. We all know that uh, the refugee crisis in Europe started around 2013, 2014, and it climaxed in 2015 uh, with uh, the with the borders being open and uh, people, refugees, uh, rushing into Europe, etc. Well, uh, after the the decision of the European countries to close Greece's northern borders in late uh, 2015, Greece had no other uh, chance, no other way as to close its own borders as well. It, uh, it's simply not possible to host uh, hundreds of thousands uh, of uh, refugee or asylum applicants in Greece uh, because uh, we simply can't afford that. And it's also a problem with, uh, within the societies. We've seen xenophobia and uh, acts of violence from people that were very friendly uh, uh, the societies were very very acceptive to the to the refugees in previous years but now uh, there's no real appetite for uh, the greek society to cope with this issue so uh, i think it was the right choice for uh, uh, the greek government to enforce uh, the the policing of the borders uh, facing Turkey, because most, uh, like 90% of the people that tried to cross the border on Evros were uh, people from Afghanistan and Pakistan and not Syrians uh, who were uh, dislocated from, uh, from Syria. Uh, the other thing is that uh, since the war in Syria is literally in a standstill or in a deadlock right now, we should be more uh, trying to find a solution there in order to have all these three and a half million people of Syrians uh, go back to the country in a safe, in, sa in safety, in a democratic uh, Syria uh, that will be inclusive and uh, will uh, tolerate uh, uh, both sides, let's say the Sunnis and the Alevis and the Shia and all the stuff and uh, not be able to have uh, to, to to try to have uh, settle scores uh, with uh, with the Assad regime which we know he's a war criminal he's he's a beast but uh, he's the reality right now and we have to see how we can find a way to 
have all these people go back to their homes. Not all Very of them will though, yeah. eventually Very try to do that, but Very there's difficult. no way that Turkey will will be able to maintain with three and a half, three and a half million of refugees there. So I see much efforts trying to push the problem to to the neighbor rather than trying to find a solution in in the in the source of the problem, the well of the problem, which is Syria. So. Uh, despite of uh, all these harsh uh, uh, images from uh, the the borders that uh, the Greek police was pushing back with uh, water and uh, gloves and even uh, use of violence, I think Greece had no other choice rather than uh, enforce the border. And uh, right now, what is at stake is try to uh, have better conditions for the people that are on the islands especially in Lesbos and Chios, uh, put them in safe places, uh, have their uh, hygiene and uh, have the people, uh, the young kids uh, have their education and try to cope with at least the people, the refugees and the applicants that are in Greece right now, help them have a better life uh, the way they are. There is a decision, I think, gradually, uh, there will be a, a relocation of these people from the islands to the mainland. Uh, it started uh, three days ago with around 450 people from Lesbos and will continue until uh, the population at the disgraceful uh, Moria camp uh, goes down from uh, around 40,000 to around 20,000 people. It's insane, the but, numbers uh, that we're not uh, I, I, I should mention as well that it, it was also a, a very cynical uh, uh, game plan by Erdogan trying to blackmail the European Union by using these people uh, as uh, tokens and uh, in his fight also with Greece and trying to have uh, to stage a hybrid war with Greece and uh, but he failed and uh, historically speaking it is the first time uh, that Greece uh, uh, let's say one on the battlefield against Turkey since uh, 1921. Since uh, 1990 years, we've been suffering uh, minor or bigger defeats from Turkey on the battlefield. Uh, let's say Cyprus, uh, let's say Istanbul 1955, uh, 64, uh, people have gone out of there, Cyprus 1974, then several incidents in the Aegean. And it was the first time that really Greece stood up to Turkey. And uh, this is really, let's say, uh, very good also for the sentiment of the people to, to realize that once they believe in something, they have a government that has a comprehensive plan to defend uh, uh, sovereignty, uh, they can uh, be successful. Well, thank you, Yanni. I think that was very, very useful, uh, very useful discussion. I would like to uh, invite our friends, uh, should they want to make a comment. Welcome, Maro. Nice to see you. We watch your show straight after this. <laughs> and, no, no. Uh, I'm not going to go live today. I think right. I'm good enough. You want to put a question to Yanni, Maro? Um, concerning, first of all, you said we have 40,000 people in Lesbos. That's not accurate. Mm -hmm. We have 20,000 people in Lesbos. No? Uh, 40,000. In Lesbos? Yes. Then how many do we have overall? I think we have 42,000 on the seven, islands. 70, around 70,000 on the islands overall. Okay. Um, concerning moving them to the mainland, I've heard the conditions in which they're moving them are not okay. So if you have, you know, if you have the coronavirus around and you're moving people in this situation, let's not discuss the situation that mm. the people were repatriated from, from Barcelona. You know, I don't know if you've yeah, yeah. been yeah, following. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they're, no, they're in quarantine in a, in, a, in a hotel right now. Yes, okay, but can I go into that subject or not? Is yeah, that okay? sure, uh, sure. So I have a friend who was on the airplane. She came from Barcelona and she told me the National Health Organization asked them to find masks and gloves on their own before arriving to the airport and get to the airport wearing the masks and the gloves, yes? First of all, in Barcelona and everywhere at this moment, there is no possibility of finding a mask. 
So they made sure, they they made it clear that for the, it's their in their best interest to be wearing masks because obviously when uh, Mr. Chiodas, the Professor Chiodas is saying that we should all be treating ourselves as a potential uh, carrier of the virus. Yes. So if you have 200 people on an airplane and you don't know who these 21 that it came out they are are for, are you know carrying the virus, then the only logical thing to do is put masks on everyone. You know. Of course. So they they asked everyone to find masks. Of course, they couldn't find masks, but they didn't think to send them with a courier to the airport in Barcelona and have them waiting there for the people so they can wear them. Then they went on the airplane. Some of them wore masks. My friend specifically was sitting next to a person who was found positive. Oh. Okay. Um, the yesterday they said that they're going to inform them about next steps, especially people. Who are who were sitting near? Mara, are you referring, Mara, are you referring to the repatriation of? Uh, yes. Of yes, yes, yes. Love, yes. Right? Mm. So she was only informed that she's negative and she can go home. She was not informed after two weeks of quarantining herself in Barcelona to be safe. She went on an airplane that she was not protected, and then she was not informed that she was sitting next to a person who was positive, which means that in the next few days she could have symptoms. What if this person doesn't have? another place to stay and she has to stay with her parents of course they gave them the option i hear today to stay in the hotel as well but what's the point why is it so difficult when we're doing so great and doing everything so early to think of this minor detail of sending the masks to barcelona to give them to the to the passengers and from madrid i saw a post of a passenger who said how amazingly uh, the greek government did because once they reached the airport of athens and not before once they reached the airport so after the flight they provided them with masks and glass masks and they put pictures on facebook saying that you did wonderfully and i was like no no dude that's not the way it has to be before the flight <laughs> so i see that we have um, we have acted so fast and there are small details that can really make a difference. And we're just not, I don't know, we're, and we are not following them. And then when, you're, when they're being asked uh, by journalists at the, at the, at the pre press conferences, if that's the right way to say it, they just deflect. They don't answer the full question. Yes. Uh, well, uh, obviously you're right, of course. And uh, you, you bring up a very good point, which is we shouldn't over let's say, overreact to the situation in uh, who is uh, uh, doing best his job, etc. Of course, there are many deficiencies around. Uh, the state was not prepared for a biological emergency. Uh, to give you an example, some 70 firefighters were, cashed, were crash trained to become uh, biological warfare first responders within one week. And now they are at the civil uh, protection unit. Uh, so there was no, no plan for something like that. Absolutely no plan. And uh, it was like uh, uh, the Greek way of uh, in, uh, trying to innovate uh, stuff uh, the last minute. Uh, that's why I think that's why most of us say that uh, the, the response was good because we know how deficient and how bad the, the, the situation in the Greek state was. But of course, you're right. This is absolutely, uh, let's say, negligence from the Greek state to have all these people fly with that protective gear. Uh, and and uh, I, I was thinking as well, there are 2,000 people stuck uh, in the Istanbul airport for the last six days, and they can't go anywhere. They can't go out, they can't travel. 2,000 people in Istanbul airport. They should jump on one of Erdogan's buses. Yes, yes. It's, but if I can add, the thing is that, okay, we knew there was a deficiency. And sometimes when I hear, I've been saying the Greek government has been doing great, but I don't usually say what is also in my mind. That is, yes, we acted very fast because we knew we weren't prepared. But at the same time, as a citizen, I, before, before following all the measures, I was telling my friends, just shut up and stay at home. Now that we are fully following the measures with all the implications that has in our lives and the economy, now we have the right to question. Mm -hmm. When you're Mara, not following... You've been, you've been in isolation how long now? Since the 29th of February. 29th of February. Yes. So 
once you're following the measures, then you have the right to ask questions. Mm -hmm. So when, an, when a journalist asks, why is this happening like this? For me, right now, it's not okay anymore to deflect. Yesterday, I uploaded the video talking about this specific flight on detail, okay? And for six hours or seven hours, my video was down because someone reported it because apparently it wasn't okay for me to give such detail. Really? Can you believe? It? I'm a nobody. I have like 3,000 friends on Facebook. That's it, you know, and 100 people are uh, watching my videos and mm. still someone thought that I had to be silenced because we have to pretend that we're doing everything perfect and that's not okay. You know, today again, mm -hmm. the, um, I don't want to say exactly what, but there was a question and you know, now the journalists are not present. They're, they're sending their questions in. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to deflect because there's no one to, you know, return mm -hmm. You know, come, come, come back with another question. Yeah, follow yeah, I wonder, so, Yanni, could you, could you, could you comment on that, on that issue of the journalists actually putting their questions through email or through, um, and actually getting their questions read to them? Well, while uh, well, this, this is a new procedure that's happening also uh, in other, in other countries as well. In the European Union, uh, all press conferences are uh, now with uh, prearranged the questions, and there's no. Uh, real um, uh, ability to post questions uh, live. Uh, so this is a real problem. The, the, I think uh, Maro has a point there. A Maybe they can try point. Zoom since they're trying to make, uh, you know, schooling, homeschooling and by, uh, you know, they're telling people to work with teleconference and everything and they're using it in the ministries, the ministers between them. Maybe it's time that the journalists can tune, you know, go in via Zoom and ask questions because for me it's not okay at this time if the only way I can uh, I can pose a question to the government is this journalist and if these journalists who are not always trying to make uncomfortable questions obviously even when they try a little bit these questions are not answered me as a citizen they are my representative there you know it's just it's and it's gonna go it's gonna get worse because it's it's normal it's going to get worse because things are going to get more difficult and they're going to be avoiding answering questions because this is what politicians do, no? Uh, well, uh, I can't, I can't uh, add that anything with what you say. Unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not into the, the field of the health uh, industry reporting, so I can't really know how much uh, of uh, info is being kept uh, a secret from the people and if there is something more that could be added but certainly the way that is handled regarding uh, how to keep uh, people uh, aware of the various uh, points and if there are deficiencies in various uh, areas of departments of the government certainly there there is uh, not the level of uh, communication and uh, and um, uh, let's say informing the people that uh, I would be happy with. No, I, I agree with that. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions from anyone? Any any comments? Any any points anybody wants to put across? Um, maybe. We've got Charles. I see Charles has joined. Charles has joined us. Hello, Charles. Welcome back. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Well, so I, not, thank you. Thank we you. We will all. release everybody early. Oh, oh Charles. Charles wants to ask. Yeah. Back. I am, guys, I am, I'm not Greek, right? I'm half Greek, so I'm commenting from a foreigner's point of view. Um, I understand what you're saying, Maro. I, I take a lot on board. Um, but at the same time, I do agree with you that politicians have to find a way of answering a question without actually getting trapped. Uh, and journalists are trained to ask questions to trap. So the two are probably playing a chess game, uh, which is frustrating. I totally understand. But one thing I would like to say, it's an observation. I'm not really asking Yanni a question, but I have, I have something to mention to Yanni in a minute. What I would say is, as a Brit pensioner living in Greece in the last few weeks, uh, months, I would prefer to be here than to be under Boris Johnson. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the other thing is that we have our kids living in Jersey in the Channel Islands, which comes under the UK, but has its own government. And they are still not locked down. 
Mm. Okay. So I think your guys, your guys being your current government, your current authorities, uh, with the SMS to go out, uh, with the passport, etc., are doing a pretty damn good job. For somebody of my age, and I'm nearly 68, I feel more secure here than I would do in the UK. Okay? Um, so that's one point. I totally agree with your frustration, however. Uh, your point on the guys flying home, I probably... I don't know, I might be wrong, but I would have thought it might be up to the Spanish authorities or somebody from the departing country to provide because you're actually sending people out of your jurisdiction into somebody else's jurisdiction. In my book, it would have been up to either the airline or the authorities. It's a very tricky question. It's a very tricky area, but I totally agree with what you're saying. If you're sitting to next to somebody who's got it, you know, I find that bizarre. You either separate them completely. If you know that they're confirmed, it's like the old days on the plane, the smokers and the non-smokers, or, you know, you don't allow people to go who have it with people who don't have it, if you know. I think they weren't tested. The people who were traveling were not tested when they boarded the plane. Yeah, fair enough. But then... Is that up to the airline, the country of jurisdiction? Um, the no, so I think it boils down to who's accountable at the end. And yeah. you know, whether you can hold the country, the country that is sending the passengers accountable, or whether you, can ha- uh, whether you can hold the airline accountable in these situations, in a situation which is as desperate as, as it is in Spain right now, I think it would be really be a long shot if you could hold them accountable. So the receiving country, Greece, uh, probably took the decision saying, well, we can't hold them accountable. Can we test them 14 days beforehand? Probably not. Um, I would agree with Maro that, uh, you know, masks, at, at least masks, but certainly segregation within the airplane or maybe taking temperatures and saying, you guys have a higher temperature, sit in the front of the plane. You guys have a lower temperature, sit in the back of the plane. I mean, there are protocols. Um, and maybe this is just a case of uh, an emergency situation where, you know, you just pile bodies into the plane and get them back home because on the one well, hand, families yeah. trees, you've got uh, you've got pressure on the on the in on the home side. It's not an easy not an easy situation for anyone. I don't envy these people's jobs, to be honest. No, I definitely don't envy. I certainly don't envy the people in the front line. I have maybe a little bit of envy for the politicians if they're being honest, completely honest with everybody. But the people in the front line and the people who actually had to put these people on the plane, I certainly don't envy their job. And I think in international law, the airline is accountable. So if you're inebriated and you have too much use of and the GM puts you on the plane, they're accountable for that or BA or whoever. I don't know what it comes to coronavirus, to an illness, etc. It's a very this difficult is- Mm. But this Sorry. was a repatriation flight. And if and the mistake of the National Health Organization okay, is at least if you can't provide the masks, don't, don't call people and tell them to find their own masks because you're telling them you need the mask to travel. It's in your best interest. But me, I can't provide. Or call the airline or call the airport in Spain or call the government and say, can we have 300 masks? We know you don't have enough. We're going to send them to you tomorrow via UPS. Via UPS, we're going to send you back all the material we used. You don't yeah. put you don't put your your people on the airplane and then tell them now I'm going to test you. It just doesn't make sense, you know. Did you guys see the video I... on YouTube this morning? There was a YouTube video of an Air India uh, Air India flight where the pilot escaped the fl- escaped the airplane from the front window because Whoa. the inside people were coughing in in the back. Oh, so yeah. he go through the things. So he opened his window and he climbed out of the. Out of the so yeah, I mean, there are worse situations, Mara. Yeah, I think, yes, of course there are. But yeah, uh, okay. I mean, in Thessaloniki today, I've just seen on the TV, one thousand five hundred and seventy-nine people have had to pay one hundred and fifty euros. Fine. I don't know what. I don't know how many people have been fined in Athens. Okay. Mm. Well, I've been to work three times now in the last since the lockdown, and I haven't been stopped yet. Uh, okay, to yeah, to same. Right, if, uh, same here. I was dispatched as well. And by the way, ahead, 
And by the way, just to, because it's too serious, this thing that goes on and on, you realize that more men are dying than women. Mm. And I can tell you why, because every time I, I'm sent out to do the shopping. <laughs> <laughs> right. Beginning, I read I, a couple of weeks ago, I read an article that was about Italy that was saying that the reason more men are ill is because they travel more and they work more. And I don't know. But... Yeah. I have a question. Smoke, yeah. More stress. Yeah. Do you sure. think we're going to see in the next year, after before the next wave, do you think we're going to see internal migration in Greece? Uh, it will depend on uh, the, the previous uh, topic we raised with uh, Stavros about how the, the exit strategy will look like and which sectors of the economy will uh, start uh, working again. If it will be, uh, I don't see really a, a chance for tourism to, to be on its feet again for this year. It's, uh, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. So many, many of the people that were supposed to work on the islands or uh, Rhodes or Crete have to find other jobs somewhere else. So it, it will definitely need to be uh, a plan for, uh, for domestic uh, migration for in order to have people working uh, otherwise they they will stay idle with no jobs because all these uh, fiscal measures and all these stimulus measures will run out in about three or four months then uh, what what after that what comes after that so i think definitely will there will be a, a need for for uh, internal uh, migration and i think one one of maybe the most important point you raised in your previous uh, position is that even we can't expect everyone to be absolutely 100% correct. There will definitely be mistakes. But when you suppress the mistakes and you try to uh, have people uh, uh, to, to, to not uh, being able to raise their uh, comments or uh, have their voice heard, then you lose much of the, let's say, the, the, the goodwill that has been uh, created in uh, recent weeks. So it's a big mistake. I will try to raise that to people in the government because uh, they don't, they, they don't ha have nothing to fear because they have generally, they've done a good job. Okay. Uh, but certainly they've done some mistakes. It's no problem for them to, to acknowledge the mistakes and be able to prevent next mistakes from happening. And uh, by suppressing questions and uh, awareness, I think it's a big, uh, it's a big problem there. So you, it was a very good position you take and thank you for Thank you. Martha, I think you have a question. Martha Kondodemon, do you want to jump on? Or shall I read your question out? What do you have on the chat? Do you want to unmute your, or shall I unmute you? So Martha is asking, do you believe that this may be, ah, she will, she will unmute. Go ahead, Martha. I think she's mute. She is, but I'm thinking she's going to unmute herself. Okay, I will unmute you. There you go. Martha, can you hear us? Martha, can you hear us? I think Martha has a problem with her microphone. I'll read mm -hmm. I'll read uh, I'll read her, her question then. Uh, do you believe that this may be a chance for Greece to develop a basic digital industry sector? So mm -hmm. I would argue that there is already a basic digital industry, whether it will be strengthened or not. I think it's a great, great opportunity. And if uh, you're talking about internal uh, I, migration, I can't, I can't imagine of a better uh, opportunity. As much as cynical and tragic as, as it may sound, this uh, situation, it's it's a tremendous opportunity to have uh, uh, Greece, uh, let's say, have a leapfrog uh, in part of the digital uh, commerce. Uh, we've seen some uh, very good points, which we couldn't imagine, even imagine a couple of years ago, like people uh, being uh, informed on their, uh, with alerts on their uh, mobile phones, on the situation, on uh, people being able to send SMS and uh, uh, obey the instructions uh, of the authorities. Uh, we've seen the, the site, the format.gov.gr working properly for people who want to notify what they're doing, what they're going to their job, etc. So, Basically, we've seen some things that uh, has put, have put Greece 
on the scale of a proper country with functional uh, governmental digital uh, uh, communications now it's part of the of the rest of the of the equation which is the isps and the the rest of the real economy and the digital uh, uh, providers to come up with uh, creative solutions and how to best uh, promote us uh, i think the, the the tailors the retailers recently the last few days are coming up with very innovative ideas on how to for shopping for uh, uh, having goods delivered to you etc uh, they're keeping their shops open on a digital scale i think uh, it would be are you referring are you referring to the um the e-food and the yes and sclavenitis yes Sclavenitis. sorry Stuff yes. is an equal deal, right? Yes, and it's 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 like a for said deal, but uh, that's how it works. It's we're in a war economy right now, and uh, the the situation, the reality, will impose its uh, terms uh, on 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 the economy. So it's uh, definitely a great opportunity. Absolutely, I think that people will have the opportunity during this time. I mean, if there's one thing people can do while they're stuck at home between four walls is to sit and reskill, use whatever time they have yeah. to learn a new skill, yes. learn programming, and learn how digital skills, um, understand what the gig economy looks yeah. like, yes. um, you know, and use Udemy, use Udacity, use for, uh, Coursera. For, for, for instance, these. I will tell you from, from uh, my previous, uh, uh, my previous job in the entertainment industry, I've see a lot of people now going online and having creative shows uh, online. And there was even a stage play, a theater yesterday, live on YouTube with five cameras, live broadcast of a, of a very high quality uh, stage play in Athens, which, which was broadcasted on YouTube live. So we'll see innovation from places we haven't even imagined yet. And I think the mainstream, uh, uh, the mainstream uh, corporations will have a hard time coping yeah, okay. with yeah. new ways of innovation that will come up from uh, uh, citizen society, etc. So it's interesting well, we, times from from that. Very, side. we live in. We certainly do. We live in interesting times. And um, Yanni, I want to say thank you very, very much for giving us thank your you. time and uh, your you. insights. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Maro. Thank, thank you, care of yourselves. Thank you, everybody else. Stay uh, safe. For everybody else for uh, for joining us this evening um and uh, perhaps we'll see you on another one we have another one tomorrow evening i think we have another one tomorrow with stephanie Burden. Stephanie Barrent. yeah she'll be talking about zero, zero waste. waste so it's, we're taking we're taking some of our meetups that we have normally at the cube and we're going to put them on this forum as well uh, but when we don't have a normal meetup, we'll we'll invite a guest like yanni uh, and a local expert or an international expert to talk um with with our with our our crew and our 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 online family so yanni thank you very much very thank you much, thank everybody. you guys thank Take you care. very Bye, interesting everybody. and uh we, we're going to restream this at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning uh on on the facebook page and uh good luck and uh and good night good night good night bye guys. Zito <laughs>